got some machine alteration or something, but you've got a complex control system, or you need a web enabled control system, this kind of thing will do a whole lot without the attached to the PC. Um, they, this is the XM, which has been extended, the clock speed has been increased, the amount of RAM has been increased. They demoed them at uh, Live Radio Live in 2008, the original one, and it was running the Blend movie. Uh, whichever one it was at the time, the Open the Movement Project on a flat screen, big hotel in high definition, and the processing was taken for that just fine. People from the top of they're about 120 quid in the case, so pretty much cheap hardware. Uh, an alternative is very similar hardware um, architecture, it's another AMAP processor. These things are tiny, like their names suggest gun sticks, they're the size of that sort of size circuit board that's three millimeters thick or something, with all the components. Um, because they're so small, they're aimed more at kind of uh, industrial embedding where you've got the machines to, to mount them properly and things, where the big board's got the old fashioned point one inch pitch headers that you can plug things in um, yourself. But these are quite handy in kind of embedded solutions for maybe data logging or mail and this kind of thing that you're using um, because they're so small and involved. And down to the good old Arduino. So this Arduino started off this one I borrowed. This is uh, the Lumi Lenovo, I think, but uh, announcing it is always interesting. Uh, this is this is the original one um, that they did. And it's it's grown on from this, so there's at least half a dozen different versions even on the Arduino site itself and then you get clones, the CDN, the free um, because of the documentation. So the current one is the UNO, they've changed the serial port thing a bit and stuff. But as far as the user's concerned, it still does the same thing. You plug it in with a USB lead, program it, you don't need any external tools. Uh, it's a job of printing some downloads that will run on anything. Um, and you write it's actually a, um, a version of C and C++ with a lot of helpful libraries built in. So if you look to program on one of these chips in C or C++ from scratch, you find you have to read rules of commands to know where all the registers are to control your different hardware. Whereas if you want to read an analog value on this, you simply do analog read and the pin them and it will give you a value back. Um, so there's a lot of software components in there. Um, they are the, the basic Uno is quite limited because it's a, a slow-ish 16 megahertz processor and um, hasn't got all that much RAM. Um, so it can do a lot of things, and there are some amazing uh, projects which have got full uh, graphical displays on televisions, um, black and white done with just this chip and a few resistors and things. Uh, so you can, you can get a lot out of it if you know how, but it's kind of limited in scope. So there's a lot more versions. Uh, the Arduino Mega is on its second revision as well, um, and it's a much more powerful ADR, uh, very similar style. It's got more I.O. and more memory, but similar performance. So you don't see much speed up using it, but you can build much more complicated programs and applications. Uh, you can run web servers and all sorts of stuff. Even the Arduino, but the leg is more popular because of the extra code space. Um, a new one I've only heard about this year, but I'm not, I haven't read into it a great deal. It's the Leaf Labs Maple, which is a, an ARM STM32 ARM Cortex. ARM embedded processor um, for kind of microcontroller applications, but they've got um, Arduino like development environments. So they've got bootloader and they've got a similar kind of set of background libraries that you don't have to get down from their network programming. 
Um, 72 megahertz, it's a lot faster, it's a 32 bit processor, so it, can, it could be capable of a lot more complex tasks. Um, and the chip kit which has come out this year uh, is kind of being sponsored by, by Microchip, who are Apple's big competitor in the microcontrol market. Now, the chip kit is running an 80 megahertz MIPS 32 bit processor, so it's much, much more powerful uh, and actually comes in around the same price as the Arduino Premium. Um, so the demo I've got downstairs with one of these is generating VGA on the fly with some resistors and no external uh, you know, computational power. It's very much more powerful than the, uh, than the original Arduino. They do a max 32, which is incompatible with the Mega, um, and that's even more powerful again, so it's got more memory and, and DMA control. There's one of those in the wrap, and it's the chip kit is actually software compatible with the Arduino as well, the chip and digital and the computer community, the open source community, uh, chip kit to all have built the, the compatibility libraries up. So if you've got if you've got a, a third party library for the Arduino which uses hardware level, it won't run because it's a different processor, so it's going to need support in anything that uses the Arduino X abstraction layer, so all the digital write and the, the serial libraries and all this kind of stuff has been ported and will run faster in fact on the on the chip kit without any more uh, anything other than just a read file for a new target. Um, it uses an adapted version of the uh, Arduino software that runs on Java. It looks exactly the same. It's got an extra menu which lets you select, uh, select the chip kit for, um, which gives you all the tools you need the compiler based on GCC um, and the download tool, which runs again with no external programs, so you just plug it in again. So what's open source hardware, what I've talked about there are mostly are development boards to start building. There's quite a few kind of uh, products as well which integrate uh, these development boards or are designed from scratch. It's a RetroRack 3D printer, which was designed by someone in an office across the hall from me at the University of Art. Um, there's one of these on display down in the um, in the exhibition area downstairs. It's a 3D printer which is capable of printing itself. Now, obviously it can't print the steel rods and things, but all these joints and connectors, the whole thing, it will print a complete replica of all the connectors and you can build up an animal. They're working at the moment on conductive paste that you can, say it can draw the same circuit boards, which will give it an extra layer of self-reproducibility. Um, the, this couple of other here, Bus Pirate is a, a little tool, logic analyzer tool, which is completely open source. Quite interesting that it can analyze communications for, for reverse engineering hardware um, or just debugging. And the Open Moco you may have seen around 2008, 2009, there's an attempt to make an entirely open phone, um, which is kind of stopped, they're not producing any more. Um, before and where it's taken off, and there wasn't really anything open in the handset market. And they went from CAD design to the case and circuit boards right through to the software layer, and the whole phone was entirely open source. Um, So a bit about the demo, this is down in the exhibition play. It's a bit more robust than the original prototype, which was on old breadboard because I didn't think it last. I think it was playing with it so well. Um, so this is the, the chip kit uh, Uno running VGA with a set of resistors and just basic controls. Uh, the sketch to do all this about six sides is A4, so it's not an enormous amount of code, that's down the tape as well. And as you can see, the circuit, external circuitry, a few jumper wires and a couple of displays. Uh, it does glitch a bit, 
the, some of the time range routes and the quite smoothed out. Uh, but it is playable and it does keep scores. Um, it's going to have quite a good fans. We've got prize in the raffle. This is the most powerful of the chip kit boards it's got. 512k brown and um, significant power for an embedded uh, microcontroller board. Uh, about £35 each on the board. Uh, it's been sponsored by Farnell Electronics, who are an industry supplier, um, I think, looking to get into some of the hobbies market as well. But check them out, UK Farnell. Farn. And that's it for the presentation. The, I've got the URL sorted out this year. So it's podcamp, nathan.com slash podcamp11. Slides aren't up there yet because I already finished editing them and talk previously. So I'll, I'll upload them in a few minutes uh, and you can get the slides and the source code and schematics and everything for the polling demo and some other projects all on the site as well if you're interested. So thank you for listening. Are there any questions? Yep. Um, I have one. Uh, uh, are you using a TV player? Yeah. And, uh, I use uh, rock rocks, and it's uh, becoming increasingly harder to find uh, an MP3 player. Uh, I use the iRiver H10. Yeah. It's, uh, it's very hard to find that now. It's older, it's like seven or eight years old, and it's very hard to find. Uh, is there any company out there that's going to maybe think about building a, an MP3 player with that one on rock rock that I've got? No idea. It's I, I have actually been working on building an MP3 player from scratch. This um, open project based around an ARM process. I mean, we have a budget that may not necessarily be MP3 and ARM. Yeah, well, this is it. I've got an old computer chip, but no, I, I haven't heard of anyone trying to do a hardware for a, for a rock box. Yeah. Interesting idea. Yeah. Uh, Nathan, thanks for a good roundup of uh, available hardware. Just a bit of comment. It's nice to see that microchip, after a uh, five year delay, finally realized that they are lacking in this space. Yes. Yeah. They're quite cash out. Uh, microchip has done quite a lot at opening up their tools to Linux users in general. They, uh, about two months ago, they released something called MP Lab X, which is a new NetBeam space. Uh, cross platform development tool which replaces the old MP Lab Windows 16 bit application. I mean, for the part. back in the late 80s and early 90s, Microchip were the, the first people to offer free development tools. Yes. Um, and, and so that was the real thing that kicked off um, low cost development. But they, they have been somewhat lacking, and the leaders obviously don't have the likes of Atmel and ARM. Um, there's, there's a lot of support in the Linux, but there's, there's a, somewhat of an urban myth that AVR programming under Linux is easier than PIP programming. Well, I've done a lot of PIP programming using an entirely open source stack. Uh, it's a package called GPU Utils, which is a new PIP utility, which contains compiler and link and all the link scripts for microchips, chip processors. And there's, uh, binary called PK2 command that's on microchip's own website which we use one of their very cheap programmers from a Linux machine to actually program the chips. So it's reasonably straightforward to actually develop the PIP, although a lot of the argument about why I'm doing it is that you are just it's easy to program on the Linux. Hello. One final thing, but plug, if you're interested in open hardware and we're speaking in the great hall that Um, and hack spaces the place to go to play with the response. The project was taken to the place hack space, which is why we're going to have a generative project in the case. Yeah, you said you think that uh, the tick sounds are difficult to program. When I had a go a while ago, I found that um, you know, to do things like read them or find the value of top a dozen lines of code just to set up a pick, set up all the registers, set up all the callbacks and stuff, and be trust. Doing an Arduino with one line of your 
But that, that, that that's that's around us was what made it kind of not part of the pick. I'm going to that example. No, absolutely. When we're talking about different things, maybe a pickaxe programming, which is a, a higher level thing, which as right. abstraction would be pick based equivalent of our. I'm just curious if it's changed since two years ago whenever I looked at pick programming. Still the the end of it picks are still, there's, there's nothing really in this kind of abstraction layer that does the, the lead work for you. The 32 bit picks, like the, the chip pick that I showed you there, they've got full Arduino library. And in fact, most of the um, pick 32 demo boards, even not the you know, incompatible Arduino boards, you can run the Arduino layer on and, and then run these really simple online instructions to read now on how instead of having to be like the same old set of the other objects. Yeah. 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 The problem is we've limited electronic experience. Yeah. Are any of the ports easier than others? Or the, easier to work with? The Arduino type format is, is ideal if you're not uh, my experience with electronic because it's it's plug and go you all these headers are all designed to just plug it to one and you yeah uh kits so like this one which can set uh set of different wires and lights and so on and in project manner obviously plug this wire to this wire and, and you'll build up the necessary electronics on which to be able to do the hardware that you need to get the software to do something. Um, so the Arduino type uh, forms, so Arduino or the or the 3D or all those kind of things are plug and play. Are any of the other, or any of the ports better or worse with the support of uh, the wild shields and stuff? Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, you need to check that with all of them. There are, there are compatibility issues between for shields that you made for the Mega, the Uno, uh, and certainly with the new chip kit ones, because the chip kit ones are running in 3.3 volts, which isn't causing a problem with a lot of the shields, but there are a few that are specific for 5 volts, and there's some level translation issues. Um, so the original Uno works with the most ports because it's the most popular, it's the most developed that's been done around it, and um, there's a lot of them. When you, when you buy the shields, I'm sure it will most of the websites are very explicitly. It doesn't work with the specific variety. Or only works with the specific variety. Um, so the unit's got the biggest library. Uh, most of them will say you get through the app. Any more questions? Yeah, I'm not so sure. Uh, question or comment. Uh, I am involved in the app space in the last week. Or been doing it for years uh, and can help with 
with setting up the circuits if you're interested in coding the, the artifact or just the, the coding side of it. Um, it's a good way to pick up and, and learn. So Hackspace is very useful for getting into this. Yeah, I was just interested in how many of your audience were interested in the software side of the open source and how many were interested in the hardware side. I think that's if you just have a quick show of hands to see how many people were interested in one or the other or both. Yeah, I mean, if, so if you come mainly because you're interested in the hardware side, the open source hardware, basically. got a few electronics people. Yeah. Good, and, and software people. Just, uh, didn't want to 